Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 164 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And today, um, what we picked up for today were these um, beads and they're the big fat hole beads. And what we're gonna do with those is we're gonna turn them into fabric beads or covered beads like this. So I saw Sonia Stepto do this with, she just had some beads that had big holes in them and I just was, I just love it and so um, I've been wanting to do this and I thought that it would be something that we could all do together so um, here I just like shredded the extra um, string that was on or the floss that was on our bead and these ones I haven't done anything yet with but I think that these are just really cool and these ones when you look at the side with the with the hole in it it reminds me of like some flower centers that have, I've seen like some flower centers where they have like these little kind of like pods in the middle. And that's what those kind of remind me of. So I thought that that was really kind of cool. But you can use them for, you know, whatever, um, necklaces or earrings or um, just to put on as an embellishment on journals or on projects that you're doing. I also here just sewed a bead and a sequin with with some needle and thread and just sewed it right on there and then on this one here I went ahead and just put a little bit of this type of bling I just cut a strip of it and just put that around there which made it really cute so you can there are just millions of things that you can do with these but um oh and this one here this is just two beads done exactly the same way except I just held two beads together to do that one so um, I'm just going to show you how to do this with the different things that we already have and so all you do is choose a bead and I kind of try and choose a bead we're going to do the brown because that's the only one I don't have done yet at least as far as I know I did have some brown string on one of my needles and so it was like hmm Maybe I made some brown ones, but I don't remember making them. Okay, so I'm going to choose this purple colored one because it's a darker color to go with our brown. And then I take off about three feet of the floss. And that's enough to do two beads. And so that's that's why I do that. Um, you don't need that much if you only want to do one in that color. I don't think you want to do too much more than that or you'll have to deal with it getting tangled. But the three feet seems to work pretty good. That's what I've done. That's what I've done all of mine with. And then we're going to need about six inches of wire. There's no exact amount that you need. But this is going to be our needle. So we're going to fold it in half. So I'm just going to cut a piece of that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to fold it in half. And then just kind of just overlap it like this okay but we are not going to do any wrapping or anything like that we're just going to overlap it till we kind of have a tiny hole at the top like that and then just hold that just hold that little loop together because we want just a little small loop like that and then just bring your wire back down so now you have something that looks like this and again that wire is not wrapped around each other it's just overlapped and that's it and then just take your floss I leave it the full thickness of the floss I don't separate it into lesser strands so I have all six strands here and I pull out enough probably about four inches or so just so that it doesn't unwind so it doesn't pull out and then what you're going to do in order to hold that there is use your pliers and pinch it well okay we've got a thread coming off this end and then we're just going to pinch it right up there at the loop and just pinch that loop together so that it kind of holds the thread now be careful don't pinch it too too hard you just want your thread to be caught a little bit there okay so it's just pinched together that it makes the thread just a little bit tight 
you can still pull it out. But that's what you're looking for. And then because it has separated here underneath where I've got a little bit of a gap, I'm just going to take my pliers and just kind of push those two wires just so that they're next to each other. It will just help if this is all a little bit thin like that. So now our two wires are just right next to each other. They are overlapped here, but like I said, just overlapped. And we've got our thread in there. Now, I'm going to tell you, I have tried taking this and overlapping it and then twisting it like this. That does work. You know, pinching that and then twisting the wires. It works, but you can then only use that wire one time. If you do it this way, you'll be able to use it over and over. I've also tried taking it and wrapping it around my round nose pliers so that I actually had a loop there. But what happens with that is, is you wind up with two wires. When you're trying to stick it through your bead, those two wires catch your thread. So this is the best way to make your needle because you'll be able to reuse it and it won't catch as much as um, it would if you were to try and make a, a go around loop. Now, if you have a needle with a real big hole in it that you can fit this in, you can do this exactly the same way with a regular, like some kind of a darning needle or something. I don't know what they really call them. Um, but we don't have those big needles, so we're just going to use our wire. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that through, put it thread end through first, or eye end through first, and then I'm going to pull it through, leaving enough for me to hold on to this extra bit down here. Because once it once we start getting it full, it's going to want to pull through, and we're going to want to be able to hold that tail. So leave a tail that's long enough for you to hold on to. And then it's easy enough, just continually put the eye of the needle through the hole and try when you're doing this to like make your your threads kind of go next to each other it makes it look neater don't let them pile up on top of each other and then I just kind of push them over as I go in the beginning you know you're going to have quite a few there before you have to really push them over and just continue to put it around and around until you fill it up. Now what's going to happen is as it gets fuller, it's going to want to catch a little bit. And so you just kind of work it through. The biggest thing is, and the reason even if you have a regular needle with the big hole, the reason that you stick this end through first is because it doesn't tend to separate your threads and then, and then catch on them and go between them. Like if you were to take this and if you had a pointy needle, it would go right through that thread and then it would separate that thread. And this doesn't do that. And if you have the big the big needle, you just go ahead and thread it like this and then put it through eye end first. And that's what I learned from Sonia. She told us how to do that so that your point does not catch your thread because you don't really want your the new one that you're putting through to go through the middle of one of the threads that's already there. And like I said, don't don't let them pile up because that will be noticeable. So just keep them moved over. And it takes a few minutes to do it, but I just I really enjoyed sitting and doing this in the evening while I was just watching TV. I like to find crafts that I can do in the evening because I can't just sit there and just watch TV. I have to have my hands be a little bit busy. And so this is an easy one to be able to keep your hands busy while you're watching TV in the evening. Okay, so now I kind of overlapped that a little bit. I'm gonna just separate my strings till I can see my bead again. Because you wanna make sure that it's nicely covered. But you, but you could do it. Now, now it's starting to get, that was a little harder to push through. I wanna make sure it's not on top of that one. And so now it's getting to the point where now you really wanna hold on to your tail as you're trying to push it through so that you don't push that tail up through because that makes it very messy. And if it's very messy, sew some beads on it or put a sequin on it where it's messy. You, you know, it's not it's not a waste if you wind up with one that's messy. Just cover it up. Whenever you have a mistake, you can always cover it up with something. And so I'm getting right towards the end. 
making sure now especially since my threads are very close to where I want this new one to go trying to make sure that they don't go over top of the old ones which that last one just did okay now see that was a little bit harder to push through separate my threads I'm getting right to the end now so I really kind of want to get them in the right spot looks like maybe I've got enough room for maybe one more and there we go and so now this is what our bead looks like and I just think they're really cool and now I just take the tail that I had on there I bring this one down to the tail let's see I had a pair of scissors here but I don't know where they went let's try this So just tie those together. And you could probably tie and tie them right in the middle of the bead. I really hadn't thought of that, and I don't know exactly why, but I like to tie them just over to the edge like this. And if you want to cut them off nice and flush, you can do that. Put a little dot of glue on it. After you cut it or before you cut it, put a little dot of glue on your knot and that way it won't come untied. Now so far what I have done is I've pretty much left my tails there just in case I want to tie them on to something or in case I want to um, shred them like I did with the little necklace. But that is what they turn out like and I just love them. I think they're so cute. It's just compared to going from this to this to me this is just so much nicer you know having that thread coating on there just looks you would never know that it's just a little plastic cheapy bead and it really looks nice and you could use it with bead caps you know you really could make a lot of very nice jewelry with that so um now and you know maybe you might not want to make a bracelet something that's going to constantly be rubbing on things because it because it is a fabric um but but even at that if it wasn't like dangling down maybe if it was just straight across it might not be too bad but i just love the way they look i thought that this would be a great project so i'm going to be back in just a second and we'll just like maybe figure out how to decorate that up a little bit so hold on just a minute and i'll be right back okay i'm back and the one thing that i wanted to show you was how i said that you can reuse um, this needle so all you do when you're done is just pull down on your thread and because it's just kind of um, because the wires are only crossed over you can just pull down on your thread well maybe oh it would help if I didn't cross my threads over themselves or you can just pull your thread out And because we made it tight, I don't know what I've done here, but no, somehow I've got my threads all wrapped around each other. So I'm going to cut it off and pull it off of there. But again, our wires are just wrapped past each other. So then when you want to take another piece and thread it on there, all you do is you just take your open end. And I like to make sure I've got my tail the length that I want it before I pull it up there. And then I just pull it all the way up. Make sure that it goes around that little bit of the crossover. And now we've got it right there at the top. And I threaded the pink because I did want to show you just how to do the one that's double like this. Now that one I found I didn't get as much thread on. I'm not sure exactly um, why. Now what I want to do is I want to give this another 
little squeeze at the top. It doesn't have to be a really hard squeeze. Remember, if you squeeze it too hard, you'll actually cut your thread. I've done that a few times too. So, and all I do is I just like hold two beads next to each other like this, and then, whoops, drop one, pick it up and put it on there. That's how I do that. And so I just do that, making sure again that I've got enough string at the bottom to hold, and then just do it exactly the same way as we did the other. Now you may find that if you pull too tight, it's gonna want your beads to, um, you know, kind of fold over on each other. So just continue holding them where they are. The further around you get, the more they'll wanna stay right where they are. And again, you wanna kinda of keep, your, keep your threads in line, or you know, one, one continuously after another. I always come this way when I do it, over to this side, but maybe being that the way that I pull this, maybe I would be better off going to this side over here. See now here, my beads have just folded in on each other. Can you see that? See my hole on this one is coming out over here and that one's over there. So let's get those back where they belong right away and hold on to them again because if you get if you make this too tight that's what it's going to do but you're not if you get it too tight and you don't fix them right away what will happen is um it's going to wind up somehow I like wrapped this thread through there I'm pulling out the tail. Well, that was the problem. I didn't have a hold of the tail. That was the tail coming out through there. So, but yep, just make sure that you keep them straight. And you know, it doesn't have to be pulled real tight. So we're just going to continue going around like this, putting that over, pulling it tight enough to be snug, but not too tight to bend our two beads away from each other. And so you'll just continue just like the other one. And when you get all the way done, just tie your knot at the bottom. And then you're set to use that for whatever you'd like to use that for. So that's about halfway done. Maybe a little bit more. What the heck? We'll just we'll just go ahead and finish it. There's no point in just going part way. If I have enough, if I cut enough thread. Now remember when you do this. I did about three feet to do two beads like that, and you need about three feet to do these also, which I'm not so sure that I actually cut enough to do this one. And if I didn't, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit. I'm just gonna spread my strings out a little bit. I need to pull my needle down now because my tail is as long as what I have left. There we go. Just try and get a hold of it again. And it can be a little fiddly if you're, sometimes your fingers or your hands don't want to work. But you'll get there if you just take your time. Or if it gets super frustrating, then you just tell yourself another time. Set it aside. You can leave it set aside just like this and go back to it another time. Okay, so now it's getting it's getting hard to push through there. And that happens towards the end. And you can kind of tell that you're getting towards the end because of that. Because you're trying to push your needle through and it doesn't it doesn't want to go as easily you know you're getting close looks like maybe one or two more I need one right there oops and now I don't have enough thread left 
to get my needle out. So I'm going to have to unthread it. And I got my needle and my thread all twisted around. <laughs> okay, well that's it. I said we only needed one or two more, so I guess it was we only needed one more. There we go. I'm going to bring my tail down to this end this time. And I've got one little gap right there, so that's where I'm going to bring it down at. And then I'm just going to tie the knot. And I still want my knot down at the end, but you can put it in the middle if you want to, depending on where you want to hang it and how you want to hang it. And there we go. So there we go. Now we have a double bead versus just a single bead. And they're just fun. I really like them. And so just to decorate them, you know, you really can just decorate them anyway. I'm going to put this one over here with the others. Um, to use like to use this you just go ahead and take off all the little furries um, of the net behind your sparkles that just makes it look more finished if you leave I don't know if you can see them or not but there's little strings sticking out there's strings between each one and if you cut off the ones that are on your edges um, it just makes it look neater. And then I'm going to go in and now I'm going to push my scissors right up against these this these sparkles so that I don't have any extra any extra thread there. And then they'll be neat on both sides. And just don't stick your scissors through the hole at the other end of your mesh. That's plenty, I'm sure. I'm just going to cut that off. And see, now this one has the little furs, the little um, strings sticking out here because I pushed all the way up against the others. So when I go to use this, I'll just trim that off and then push up against the other side of that one because then you just get a nice clean cut and it doesn't have all those little strings sticking out. And then I just need to see how long it needs to be I'm just going to wrap it around there. And I'm going to say right here. And on this one, I'm going to leave the strings on the piece I'm going to use. So I have strings here so that it meets up with this side here and it looks the same all the way around instead of having a little gap between this one and this one when it wraps around. And then I just use tacky glue. And you could use tacky glue to, to glue on your sequins. Um, I, I don't know that I would use tacky glue to glue on a bead, but just use a regular, um, just use a needle and thread with just plain old regular thread. And you can make it match or you can make it contrasting so that it shows up a little bit, however you... All right, come on glue, I had you upside down. I don't want to use my needle because I'm going to reuse that in a few minutes. Wipe that glue off of there. Now let's see if it'll work. Probably not because now I've been holding it the other way. There we go. So just put the glue on there. And I usually start where I have my thread so that's kind of like the back of my bead well if I can get it on there and then your tacky glue dries clear so if you can see a little bit of it when you put it on there just remember it'll dry clear there we go press it on there good and tight hold it for just a minute so that it grabs it sticks really well to the fiber of the, um, what do you call that, embroidery floss once it's dry. It 
it also sticks really well to your fingers okay so there we go and now we have the brown one we made with that around there you could take the double one and put it around the middle between the two beads that would look kind of cute and so now normally I would hold this for just a little bit longer so that it doesn't want to pop off but I'm gonna set it down just to and I actually thought that they would look really kind of cute on our word beads, one on each end. I'm going to make another one like this. And um, and then I'm just going to put one on each end. I can either take this string and use my needle to pull it through my hole. But if I did that, that would be in the middle. You know, because that's it's off to the edge of your bead. So what I will probably do when I get ready to string them together is cut these off. And then I will use a regular needle and thread, put it through the center of here, through the center of my bead, and through the center of another one just like this, so that they come out like that. And then put them with whatever it is that I want to put them on. I was thinking about maybe putting them on a, a, on a stick of a strip of fabric. So it would be kind of like that. It, that would make it so that you couldn't see both sides. So maybe I won't want to do that. I'll just have to wait and see what I'm going to do with it. But I thought they would look cute with those. So that is today's project. I hope that if you try it that you have a really good time. I'm having fun with them. I really like the way that they look. Thank you very much, Sonia, for um, showing these. It's It's been quite a while ago. I've been waiting a long time to to get my hands on big hole beads and finally I thought about these because really I was looking for like regular beads that had big holes in them and that just wasn't working out for me or I saw some with big holes but they were very expensive and I don't really do expensive so so yes this is a really fun project I hope that you enjoyed this because I know I really did alrighty and then for next week we are going to need let me move this away for just a second all right, so from the Dollar Tree, we are going to need two cutting boards. They're plastic cutting boards like this. Not, not wood and not the really thin um, flimsy that you can get two in a packet. We want the regular thick kind of, you know, plastic cutting board. So we need two cutting boards and some tweezers. So that's three. And then we need a quarter of a yard of muslin or or white cotton you don't want colored um this is just natural um in color but um muslin or cotton either one works but if you get cotton 100 percent cotton and um one quarter of a yard cost me 74 cents and then four pieces of white felt regular eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10, whatever size the regular size is. So we need four pieces of felt, which were 28 cents a piece. And we need the quarter of a yard of fabric, cotton fabric, white or cream colored, two cutting boards and some tweezers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five dollars for next week's project. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. I hope that if you play with this, you enjoy it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.